surgery from 25 years ago. You got my head twisted behind my back here. I have a, I get, I have a documented shoulder injury. It's a nice speech, but you're still not coming in. Let the record show that you just battered me. Step back. And you're using... Oh! I'd like to welcome you to the John Legato Show. I'm John Legato. Here's Johnny. As you guys can see, I'm being surrounded right now. Three patrol cars. Auditors always announce the number of police cars uh, at their location. Now, their inference is that they're poor, innocent victims of police misconduct. But there are enough police widows resulting from idiots who make that claim. I have no weapons on me, no ill will, no ill intent. So let's examine law enforcement's ability to enforce stop and ID on this person who has no ill intent. Hey guys, I'm out here working. I do realize that we all have a different definition of working, but rarely does a job description say acting in a suspicious manner until officers arrive, at which time I will act more suspicious until they arrest me when I sue, and then I receive my paycheck. Hey guys, I'm out here working, and this cop's been following me around. Come on, buddy. Come on. He's now behind my car. As you can see, come on. I'm doing alright, how you doing? Good. Do you have some ID? Oh, what is that for, sir? Well, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on today. What's your name? My name's Mike Stokes with the Sheriff's Office. Okay, the uh, Centennial? Uh-huh. Okay, what's your badge number? 8716. Okay, yeah, I mean, what seems to be the problem? Well, it's... you parked here? Yeah. Again, you That's walk down the park? public street. I can park anywhere I want <laughs> as long as I'm not want. blocking someone's driveway, right? Right. That's okay. correct. Yeah. Yeah, and then you see me walk up there. So you walked up there. And then I'm walking back over here. Uh-huh. And I was here yesterday. So let's talk about reasonable suspicion. Uh, this auditor, auditor just listed a fact that would make a reasonable person suspicious. And I was here yesterday. So add to that that this is a residential area with no businesses, and the police received a complaint. Yeah. Can I get your name? I don't think that I need to unless I've committed a crime or I'm suspected of a crime. You yeah. know, I mean, I just don't really understand what the problem was. I mean, I can understand somebody being nervous and making a call, but once you get here and you see, well, nothing's really going on that's illegal, I'm walking well, I don't my know dog. that right now. Well, yeah, but you have, you have to have the actual evidence before you can just say, well, I don't know, I'm, I think you might have. That doesn't work like that. That's not how the law, law works. You oh, know? Can you tell I, me how the law works? Yeah, the, the law in Colorado states that I have to be under suspicion of a crime, either have committed one or I am about to. And you have to have reasonable suspicion that I am about to or have or something of that nature. Me parking on the side of the street, walking my dog, you see me talking to a neighbor over there, nothing about that is illegal. Absolutely not. Okay. Sit. But also obligated by law to Sit. provide identification when asked by law. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, actually, so I have the... I don't think you understand how much of this I know or have been in. Oh, I'm sure I do. Okay, so the, the thing is, is that yes, by law, I am required to identify if there is suspicion of another nope. crime. So yes, sir, nope. listen, failure to, hey, 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 no, it's just a, just a guy, don't worry. Failure to ID is a secondary charge, meaning, hey, look, I just did this crime. Now you come up and say, I need your information. You're being charged with such and such a crime. I must identify myself at that point. Oh, and if I do oh. not identify myself at that point, I would get the secondary charge 
a failure to identify because I am lawfully arrested or being charged lawfully with a crime. At this point, that's not the case. The manner of the auditor is suspicious. The statute only tells you about 50% of what you need to know to make one of these cases. The other 50% comes from case law. It is unlawful for any person to loiter or prowl in a place at a time or in a manner not usual for law-abiding individuals. So we got the manner, which is unusual. What else do we have here? Under circumstances that warrant a justifiable and reasonable alarm or immediate concern for the safety of persons or property in the vicinity. So the person in properties would be the people who own homes in the area who have watched this guy for several days in their neighborhood which has no parks or businesses. So in section two, it talks about some of the circumstances which you can consider when determining whether such alarm or immediate concern is warranted, refuses to identify themselves. Can I get your name? I don't think that I need to unless I've committed a crime or I'm suspected of a crime. Well, I don't know that right now. Well, yeah, but you have, you have to have the actual evidence before you can just say, well, I don't know, I'm, I think you might have. That doesn't work like that. That's not how the law, law works. You know? Can you tell I, me how the law works? Yeah, the, the law in Colorado states that I have to be under suspicion of a crime, either have committed one or I am about to. And you have to have reasonable suspicion that I am about to or have or something of that nature. Me parking on the side of the street, walking my dog. You've seen me talking to a neighbor over there. Nothing about that is illegal. Absolutely not. Okay. Sit. You're also obligated by law to Sit. provide identification when asked by law. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Actually, so I have the... I don't think you understand how much of this I know or have been in. Oh, I'm sure I do. Okay, so the, the thing is, is that, yes, by law, I am required to identify if there is suspicion of another crime. No. So, yes, sir, no. listen. Failure to... Hey, hey, hey. No, it's just a, just a guy. Don't worry. Failure to ID is a secondary charge, meaning, hey, look, I just did this crime. Now you come up and say, I need your information. You're being charged with such and such a crime. I must identify myself at that point. And if I do not identify myself at that point, I would get the secondary charge of failure to identify because I am lawfully arrested or being charged lawfully with a crime. At this point, that's not the case. I'm not being charged with the crime. I'm not even under suspicion of a crime. Suspicious activity in itself, which if that's what you're trying to call this, is not a crime. You know, I mean, I can understand, like Did I said. I say that you've committed a well, crime? Well, no, but you're asking for my ID saying that I am I obligated. Asked. You said that I'm obligated, which is not correct. Okay. Well, you're obligated to identify yourself. Yeah, once okay. I've been uh, charged with the crime, sir. Yeah. That is how it works. I mean, if you'd like um, and you want to take this any further, I'd request that you get a supervisor, please. And then uh, we can go from there. Do you want to do that? Well, I mean, if you're going to leave and just leave me alone, obviously, seeing that there's no crime, then no, have a great day type of thing. But if it is going to be something where you're going to try and take the same steps further, or you're going to lie to me and say that I'm obligated to identify myself, at that point, I would like that you get a supervisor, please. Adam, 31. So you're going to take this farther? No problem. No problem. Yeah, so I'm actually at work right now. I'm being stopped. They said that uh, suspicious activity, something of that nature. Um, I never said suspicious activity. Okay, maybe I manifested that on my own. I think you manifested that. Okay, well then how come it is that you're asking for my ID? You're in the neighborhood and you're going door to door. Hey, she didn't hear it. He said that uh, the auditor was going door to door. So let's add the fact that he was going door to door. And again, any one of these facts, for example, he's been there two days in a row. There are no businesses or parks in the area to walk the dog. He's vague and he refuses to identify himself. We now have plenty of reasonable suspicion. And how does that lead you to believe that I'm required to give my identification? Hey, how are you doing today, sir? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, what's your name and badge number, please? Deputy Lebsack. Okay, got you. Are you the supervisor? No. Oh, okay. Is this the supervisor? Nope. I got you. Yeah, so, I mean, as you guys can see, I'm being surrounded right now. Three patrol cars. Um, am I detained at this moment? Under suspicion of what crime? Uh, is this your car? 
I'm not answering any questions at this point until a supervisor arrives. Okay. I will not be answering any questions. Okay. I think I provided enough as it is. So I'm being detained for what? You just said my car, but what crime are you suspecting me of committing at this point in time that you can lawfully detain me? Okay, based on the, the database that I have used, you have yep. a warrant out of a reward for your arrest. In case you didn't hear it, <laughs> our officer advised the innocent auditor that he has an outstanding warrant. But what crime are you suspecting me of committing at this point in time that you can lawfully detain me? Okay, based on the, the database that I have used, you yep. have a warrant out of a reward for your arrest. Uh, notice the auditor's screenshot. False. The supposed warrant was cleared two years prior. Now, how can a supposed warrant be cleared if it's supposed? And then why would any cop believe him? The database of what? Okay. That's why you're being detained. Okay. Now, you're being cooperative with me. Yes. But if I feel that you're not going to be cooperative with me, I'll detain you in handcuffs. Okay. Well, I honestly don't think there's any need for that. I don't think so. Either. You know, I, I have no weapons on me, no ill will, no ill intent. You don't even know who I am at this point in time. I do. Okay. Now I'm asking... You have suspicion. You, right. Now I'm asking you for identification. Mm-hmm. Because I have reasonable suspicion now. This is my supervisor. This is your supervisor. Hey, how's it going, man? How are you doing? Good, yourself? I am doing all right. I mean, I'm not sure what's going on here. We got a ton of police officers. I'm surrounded. Note the change in his voice, the auditor's voice. He's busted. He's not so arrogant and self-assured anymore. Uh, I mean, I'm feeling pretty nervous right now. I'm at work, okay? I'm using this vehicle for work, and this officer, for some reason, feels that he has reasonable suspicion to be running plates around here or thinking about other stuff. I've committed no crime. Yeah, well, no, you actually have to have some sort of suspicion to actually be able to run it and go through that. An outstanding warrant is proof to arrest you, Slick. Yeah, so what I'm saying right now is the fact that you guys are just telling me that I'm going to get a charge for not identifying, that's that's a secondary charge. For me to identify, I have to be suspected of committing a crime. I have to be suspected of committing some sort of infraction. I, I am not going to give that, sir, unless I am being lawfully arrested. Is that what's happening? That's what's happening. Okay, what, can you We're put done. that down? Can you tell me what your name and date of birth is? Hey, I'm being cooperative, guys. What's your name in your database, sir? No reason to... What's your name in your database? Pulling back like that. Fail failure to identify yourself, you told me, is a crime. Okay? That's a lot. You have a warrant for your arrest. No, sir, I do not. Sure I've been living with that type of information officer two or three days ago, sitting in front of my officer. That's why we asked for... So that's why we've asked you for an Yeah, but you have to find out what you want. Mean, you don't have a warrant for your arrest. Is that what you're saying? Is that what because you're saying, your sir? Vehicle, you want me to go all the way in? I want you to go all the way in. Okay, well, I would like to find because out Because I don't want you on. falling out of the car. What charge am I being, what time am I being charged? I'm 21. Now we'll be showered with some illegal poop from some legal scholar. Cover your heads. The whole situation brings up some serious constitutional issues, especially the Fourth and Fifth Amendment. So this dude's out walking his dog after parking his car on the sidewalk, minding his own business. Plus, nosy neighbors think it's sketchy and call the cops. When they show up, they ask for his ID. Even though he's not doing anything wrong, they detain him and even arrest him when he doesn't show his ID. That's a red flag for sure. The Fourth Amendment says we should be safe from random searches and seizures. When the cops ask for his ID without a good reason, that's an outstanding warrant is a wonderful reason. Had the police not arrested him and confirmed or found no active warrant, the police would have been derelict in their duties. That's my take. What's yours? John Legato's show is being brought to you from right outside the gates of Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in beautiful North Carolina. If you like the show, like and subscribe. Semper Fidelis.